So, um, what we'll be preaching on this morning is the subject of gambling. And <clears throat> I want to start off, we'll just, just talk about the word gambling. Now, normally when you think of gambling, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably a casino, right, and gambling. Um, and that's really what I'm going to be focused on. But just gambling in general, what are you doing when you gamble? You're, you're, you're risking something. Usually you have something and, and you're in hopes of trying to get something maybe more valuable than what you're putting up and what you're risking. So I just want to be kind of clear because there's other... You, people can say you're gambling with certain things when you're making a, an educated risk assessment and you're saying, well, I have this and I want to do, you know, you could say you're gambling when you want to take another job, right? I've got a job and I'm making this much money and then there's this other job over here and there's some trade-offs and well, but maybe the company's not very well established and you can look at that as saying, well, you're kind of gambling that they're going to do well. That's not the type of gambling that I'm talking about. Okay, that, that's, that's, you know, taking on some risk and doing a job. You know, people might call it gambling when I decided to pastor a church. I don't see that as gambling because I'm, I'm following the word of God. But, but taking on just like a little bit of risk to do something that maybe you don't know the outcome of, that's not the gambling I'm referring to this morning. This morning I'm talking about gambling in the sense that pretty much everybody thinks of gambling as you're going to go to the casino, you're going to play some cards, you're going to go on the slots, you're going to do whatever. In, in trying to earn money. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to preach this morning about why that's wrong. Now, the Bible does not have a command anywhere in the Bible that says, thou shalt not gamble. Thou shalt not, you know, play slot machines, for example. The Bible never says that anywhere. So, and this is one of those things where there's a lot that the Bible doesn't say specifically and call out. You know, the Bible doesn't say, thou shalt not watch the television. Obviously, the television wasn't even created. But we need to be able to look at the Bible's truths and look at the spirit of the law, look at the things that God has said and be able to apply them in every aspect of our life. This is what we need to do as Christians. This is how you, you gain knowledge, you gain wisdom through the word of God. And by knowing what the Bible teaches on all kinds of other things, you can apply that same knowledge to other, to other things, for example, like gambling, that the Bible doesn't just explicitly come out and just say, this is a sin. And hopefully you'll be able to see this more. It's not going to take very much effort to show you. It's, and it's not a stretch either. I'm not talking about doing these mental gymnastics and, and, and trying to, to squeeze something. You know, A lot of people have these, these pet issues that they have and they want to say that they're sin, and they'll go and, and really try to, to stretch and twist the scripture to make it look like something's a sin. Hopefully you'll see this morning, I'm not doing that at all. And we're going to see, even with, the, you know, with this first passage we started off in, um, is some very good wisdom here that we're going to apply. But the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, the Bible says, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. We need to be able to prove things. So if, you, if you're not sure on whether or not something in, in life, some choice that you might have is, is sinful or some activity is sinful, well, prove it, right? Prove it against God's word. Test it and hold fast to that which is good and get rid of that that's not. Now let's prove, we're going to prove gambling this morning. We're going to see if, if gambling is of God or if it's just of the world because it, it's, it's going to be from one place or the other. Look, if we would, where we, where we started off here in 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to start reading again in um, verse number 4. It says, He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. So there's a certain group of people that think that gain, like making money, is considered godly. And that's the prosperity preachers. That's the prosperity gospel saying, oh, well, if you make so much money, then you are, you know, God is just blessing you and everything else. But that's not, that's not true as we see right here. He's saying, look, gain doesn't mean you're godly. Just because you happen to have riches doesn't mean that you're in, that, that, that even necessarily that God's blessing you, right? 
you, it doesn't mean you're doing what's right. It doesn't mean, hey, everything you're doing, you're just fine. You're not sinning. So God's just giving you all this money. That doesn't, you can't say that. You can't say that, that your money and your wealth on this earth means that you're godly. And I, I just want to make that point because also it says, from such withdraw thyself. Stay away from those people that think that that's true. And this ties in perfectly. And we're going we're gonna to get into the verses that are even more applicable. But just in general, I mean, having a lot of money, that has nothing to do with godliness at all. And when you gamble, what are you trying to do? You're trying to make money. I mean, that's, that's literally what you're doing. But look at verse number seven. It says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. So he's saying, look, just having food to fill our bellies and having clothing on, let's just be content with that. Let's be satisfied with those things. That's enough. We don't need anything else. If we can, if we can eat and survive and have clothing to protect ourselves, we don't need anything else. Very, very important to keep this in mind throughout the entire sermon, this type of an attitude of contentment. It says in verse 9, but they that will be rich. Now that word will, it doesn't mean they're going to be rich. It means those people that want to be rich. So if you think of a person's last will, it's, it's, it's your last wishes. It's what you want to happen after you're dead. How I want my money to be distributed. How I want my, you know, all of these different things. It's, you put that in your will because it's what you want. And that's what the word will means. You know, today we kind of use will like I will do this. And it just means you're going to do that when, you know, in today's language. But literally, the word, that word will, that's not what it means. It means it's, it's your intentions. It's what you want. And um, so it says here, they that will be rich, they that want to be rich, fall. Does it say they might fall? Or it's possible to fall? No, it says they fall into temptation and a snare. A snare is a trap. It says you're falling into a trap. If you are just wanting to make riches, you're falling into a trap and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, Flee these things. Run away from them. Stay as far away as possible from these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. No, the Bible doesn't say that gambling, just, just thou shalt not go to the casino. Thou shalt not gamble. But look at what we see here. Why else? Do people gamble? What, what, uh, the whole point of gambling, what do they advertise? You see the slots, they have the progressive thing running and they show you like it's a million dollars right now and they're going to flash that in front of your face. Why do they do that? Why do people take their dollar, take their quarter, take, the, you know, take their money and throw it in and pull the handle? Why? Do you think it's just because they like seeing the thing spin around? I just you, just, you just, oh, wow, because, you know, that's a really high-tech machine, right? Yeah. They, they just love watching those three things just stop, 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 stop. Like, oh, man, I really just wish I got, I got those stars to line up or whatever. No, they're doing it because they want the money. They want the payout. The game itself is really stupid. Yeah. That mindless game, I mean, take a, put it this way, take away all the money and reward from that game, who is going to sit down for hours on end and, and just get the same exact machine, just push a little button and it, and it puts your credit in, but, but there's no payout and you're not putting any money into it. And you just, just see how long you're going to play that game. That is not why people play those games. They're doing it because they want the money. And the Bible warns us, look, it's because people want to get rich quick. They don't want to work for it. They don't want to earn it. They want to be able to say, hey, yeah, I've got a, I've got a dollar. I'll throw this in here. Maybe I'll make a million. Maybe I'll make 10000 But that is such a, a horrible, wrong, wicked attitude to have according to what we see in the Bible right here. He's saying, look, flee those things. And look, I, I'm preaching to everybody. You can say, well, I don't have a gambling problem and everything else. Look, I don't care. There's people who don't have gambling problems, but they'll go to, on vacation, they'll go to Vegas and say, oh, well, I'll just try. Look, stay away from it. The Bible says flee those things. If you are focused on making a bunch of money and getting rich, they that will be rich fall. Remember, they that will be rich fall. 
If you want to be rich and you want to just gamble and, and, and just try to make all this money, you are going to fall. You're falling into a trap. It's a snare. It's, it's something that the devil puts out there, this love of money, this greed to just, to just want more things, to want more earthly possessions. And what good is it going to do you? God says we, haven't, we, we didn't bring anything into this world and it's certain we could carry nothing out. You're not taking any of that stuff out with you. It's worthless. It's vanity. It's here today, gone tomorrow. And you know what? Most of these people that, will, that do end up getting, or, you know, the, the one in the million shot where they do make a bunch of money, they go bankrupt, bankrupt within just a few years. Yeah, every, time. every time. It's like without fail. You get somebody because they don't know how to manage their money. If they knew how to manage their money, they wouldn't be so worried about trying to make 10 grand off of a few dollars. They would be working for it and earning it and, and not getting into debt and everything else and just and being wise with their own money. I mean, if you really wanted to do that, you know, it's possible people do it. They can, you know, but the Bible says even that, like even aside from gambling, we shouldn't be setting our focus on wanting to be rich, regardless of, of the means of doing it, right? Whether it's working at your job 80 hours a week and trying to build such, you know, a great company and everything else. Look, it's this, that's the same thing as the gambling. It's the same exact thing if you have that love of money. But um, specifically today, you know, this morning, applying it towards the gambling, look, why, why else do people gamble? It's because they want to be rich. It's because they, they have that love of money. Even if it's a small, it starts off small, but it's going to escalate and it's going to snowball. And the more you covet after that stuff, you're going to err from the, faith and, uh, from the faith. The Bible says, and you pierce yourselves through with many sorrows. Money is not the answer. It is, it is only going to make you miserable and more depressed and more sad. And you know what? The people who, who covet after money, that, that hole is never filled. That desire is never just met. No matter how much money you get, you are always going to want more. I mean, look at these, you know, these, these millionaires. and They're, they're always just... just constantly have to seek after you would think at some point it would be enough but it's not and that's how all sin is when you when you start getting into sin you are never ever ever satisfied and you know what that brings misery and sadness because when you never have that sense of, of just accomplishment and it's just never enough that wears on you and that's going to bring you sorrows along with many other sorrows that you get from that love of money now <clears throat> The only time I could think of anyone gambling in the entire Bible is in John 19. You don't have to turn there, but you think of the soldiers that were at Jesus' feet when he was on the cross. But even this situation, because I was thinking about this, it's, it's, it's really not necessarily gambling because, the, well, the, I'll read the verse for you. In John 19, 24, the Bible says, they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it. Talking about his coat, right? He had this, this, this garment, this jacket that, that was a one-piece thing. You know, and there was a few of them, so they didn't want to just rip it into pieces. It's okay, here's a piece for you, here's a piece for you. They were divvying up his clothing and stuff because it was worth money. So they said, let us not rend it. Let's not, not tear it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots these things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now, the reason why I say even this doesn't necessarily, I don't think it's necessarily gambling because I don't think they were like putting in money, all of them, to try to get, you know, to try to win that thing. They were just deciding who is it going to go to, right, just by chance. The way I look at this is more of like a, you know, a, a draw, a sweepstakes where like you don't have to pay anything to enter. You just put your name in the hat and somebody's giving something away. But this is the closest example I could find literally of just, of just a, a, a pure example of, of gambling. And even this, I would say, is not just like some great example of gambling. But look at who's doing it. If, if, if the closest thing we have, if we've got these soldiers that were, that were you know, gambling over, over Christ's clothing. Not a very good example, right? Not, not the best thing that you're going to want to look to and say, oh yeah, this is just fine. It's fine for me to go you know, and do this stuff. But... And this is, you know, maybe, maybe there is another example that I, that I haven't been able to think of, but um, that's the closest thing I've been able to come to uh, as, far as, as far as the Bible is concerned. Now, also think about, my next point, think about where do people normally go to gamble? I mean, yes, there's sometimes people who gamble in their house, they'll invite friends over, they'll play cards or whatever. 
But, and I've been to plenty of places like this. He's like, you're, you're, I'm, I'm speaking as someone who's done this plenty of times in my life. And the places I've gone were either to a, to a friend's house or going out to a casino, right? Now think about the casino, for example. How is a casino really any different than going to a bar, other than the fact that you could gamble? I mean, the people go there, they're serving alcohol, smoking cigarettes, and you're, you're essentially, you're going to a bar. That's, that's what you're going to. They have live entertainment or whatever. You are walking into a bar. Now, I believe wholeheartedly that it's a sin for a Christian to be going into a bar and they'd be hanging out and spending your time in a bar, spending your time around a, bun a bunch of drunks. Amen. That's a fact. So if that's wrong, then why would it be okay for you to be walking into a casino and just be hanging out with a bunch of derelicts and a bunch of people who, you know, just have, there's just, you're surrounding yourself. You say, why? Well, I'm not that greedy. I don't really care that much. You're surrounding yourself around a whole bunch of people that are. A whole bunch of people that are just, they have the love of money. They have greed. They have, you know, they like to drink. They like to, you know, all these other things. That is who you're choosing to go and spend your time with when you go out to these casinos. Just look at the fruit of it, right? What's the fruit of a casino? And you look at the, you know, they, they build these magnificent towers and palaces and places, you know. How do you think they even get all that money to begin with? It's coming off of your money, yo, know, off out of your pocket, sucker. It's it, yo, know, they, they don't build these, mis you know, these casinos because everybody wins when you go into them. No, it's it's a, it's, it's right. You know, fool is money, or surely part right? Or, or quickly, I forget how the proverb actually goes. It's it's not a. That's not scripture, but I'll tell you what, it's true. <laughs> it is. It, it that's. People who think they're going to get rich by going in a casino, they didn't build those, you know, they didn't build like the luck to a big pyramid and all this other stuff just out of their own pocket, right? They're making this money off of you, off of the suckers that go in. They think they're going to win and they walk away with nothing. Yet it's, it, you know, but this turns into an addiction. Just like drinking, you know, the Bible says, you know, when shall I wake? I'll seek it yet again. You know, you get abused, you get punished when you, when you drink and you have this hangover, you have all this other stuff and you say stupid things. But then what do you do? You want to go do it again because you just don't learn. People just don't learn. They have this, this, this problem with being a fool and not, and not learning even from their own mistakes of just wanting to do stuff again. And this is how sin is. And it's the addictive nature of it. Gambling's the same way. People will go, they'll go and lose an entire paycheck. They'll lose like $1,000 or $2,000 or $3,000. But then what do they do? I need to go get that back. Now I'm, now I'm down. Now they owe me. I need, I need to go get that money back. And this is the mentality that people have. And that's why they get sucked into this and just end up wasting tons and tons of money. I mean, <clears throat> you hear the stories of the people who gamble away their rent money. You hear the stories of the people that, you know, they have families at home and dad gets off of work on Friday with his paycheck and goes straight to the casino, blows all of his money and then has to go home. And there's no food to feed his family and there's, you know, and they got bills piling up and they're late on everything and their power's getting turned off and everything else because they didn't have money. He didn't have the money to pay for it when he actually did have the money to pay for it. But he's thinking, Oh, I need to get myself out of this situation. I need to make money fast. No, your problem isn't the money. Your problem is your own righteousness. Your problem is you just doing the wrong thing and being and, and, and wanting to have a bunch of money and thinking that's the source of your problem. That is not the source of your problem. So think about this. When you go to the casino, you say, well, I don't have that problem, right? The money that you're putting in, the money that even they pay out to you, that's not, that's not, tech, that's not money that they've like earned or worked for. What you're getting back is the money from those people that, that sacrifice their paycheck for whatever. You know? Think about the people that, that do have that problem, that are paying into this big system of the, of the casino. Even the money that you win, that's their money. That's the money that they came and lost. You wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be able to pay that out if, if all these other people weren't doing it. So think about that. Think about this. If you knew someone just killed somebody, that someone owed you money and they went and robbed somebody or killed them, took their money and then was going to like take that to pay you back, would you want to take that money from them? 
They just stole it from someone else. Well, okay, I'm not going to say the casino is stealing, but all of these other people have these problems that are just that are addicted and just going and, and throwing their money in, and they're poor and they have nothing. And you go in and you're winning money. You win money from them. Where do you think that money's coming from? It's coming from all those other people. So if that you know, think about yourself just personally. If, if your conscience is okay with just taking the, that money from those people, because that's literally where it's coming from. Even, I say, even if you don't have that particular problem of being, of being addicted to it. <clears throat> well, I have my third point in here, but I kind of went into it already earlier. You know, why, why do you even like to gamble? Just ask yourself that question. What is it that's so fun about it? Because people love doing it. And I'll admit, look, when I went and, and went to casinos and stuff, I had fun doing this stuff. But why? Just sit down and ask yourself why. Because is it, is it the noises and the lights? Right? Is it, is it sitting down and just sitting down at a table or sitting down in front of a slot for hours and hours and hours? Is that just really like fun? Is that where you're getting your enjoyment from? Say, if, if you like the lights, if you like the flashing, if you like the sounds, then why don't you just get a pinball machine? <laughs> then you could save your money, get a pinball machine, get a video game, right? You could have the lights, you could have the sounds, you can have all of that. And you don't have to spend any money. But that's not it. That's not why people like gambling. It, it simply isn't. And I don't care what you tell me, it's, that's not the reason why. Because you can do all of these things. And if you like the slot machine so much, you know what? You can buy one. And you don't have to spend any money. You can, you can make the thing where you just, just click the little thing and, and do it. Look, you don't, if you really like this stuff that much, you can do it completely without gambling. But nobody does that. Because they love the gamble. Because they love the payout. Because they like the money. They like that reward. They have a love of money. And look, whether or not you like to hear that, it's the truth. You love getting the money. You have a love of money, and the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. That is the root. The Bible says, look, all evil, where does it come from? Where is the root? Where is the source? It's the love of money. Amen. So when you want to go out to the casino, when you want to win this money, and you have that love of money, whether or not you want to admit that or not, look, it's the truth. You have that love of money. That is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. That is going to be the source of all of your problems. Your lack of contentment with what you have and your love of money. Look at verse number 9 in 1 Timothy 6 where we were. Oh, that's, we, just, we already read that. Never mind. I, turn if you would to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. a few pages back in your Bible. We need to learn how to be happy with the things that we do have and, and to stay away from this greed, stay away from this covetousness, stay away from the, the love of money or, so that we don't have to get pierced through with many sorrows. Look at verse number 11 of, of Philippians chapter 4. Verse 11 says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. We don't need to try to make a quick buck at the casino. We just need to be happy with the things that we do have. Be happy with, with the job that you have, with the money that you're making, with the, with the house, with the family, with whatever God has blessed you with. Be happy with those things. I'll tell you what, I know everybody in here today has food and clothing. I can see everybody dressed. And I know nobody's starving. And look, if you don't have, if you don't have food, join us after service. I'll give you some food. Okay? And be content. <laughs> you can come see probably just about anybody. I, I know that nobody's starving in this church. Nobody is. And even all across this country, very few people are literally starving. Mm -hmm. And those that are, those that are, is usually a result of their own sin. It's a result of their own 
alcoholism. It's a result of their own, you know, drug abuse or whatever. People who are who are literally sober, it's, it's not because they work really hard and they're doing all this stuff, yet they're still just just completely starving. Show me the case. I'd like to see. I'd like to see where that's that's actually the problem, where someone doesn't have food or, or a shirt on their back. And the Bible says that's what we need to be content with. You say, oh, well, it's easy for you to say you've got a house, you've got two vehicles, you've got all this stuff. Look, I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. That's what Paul said. He's like, like if God blesses you with a lot of things, hey, you know, don't let your pride get lifted up and, and think that you're so great because you have all this money. Know how to deal with that and handle it and be very happy and content and, and, and thankful for the things that you have. But if it gets all taken away overnight, like it very easily can, like it did to Job, don't let that change your attitude. Be thankful. Be content with the things that you have. Be satisfied that you have food and clothing. Because even after Job lost all of his stuff, he still had food and clothing. Turn, if you would, to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs 28, look at verse number 19. I'll get there myself. Proverbs 28, 19 reads, He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. So it's saying in verse 19, look, if you till your land, if you're working, you know, you're, you're out hard at work, he says you're going to have plenty of bread. When you go out and work hard and till the land and, and, you're, and you're producing something. Because look, when you're working, you ought to be producing, right? And when you're producing, there's money to be made. When something is coming up, when you till the land, you're, you're getting ready for crop, you're doing all this other stuff, it's because it's going to yield a bounty. It's going to yield something back either to the person you're working for or for yourself. So something is being produced. When something's being produced, hey, look, there's a, even if it's a little bit of, of kickback goes to the employee, goes to the worker, right? The work that I do for my boss, yeah, he owns the whole company. He owns everything in the business, but he pays his employees because he wants them doing work for him because he's not going to find people to do all this stuff for free. So He's going to pay people, and, and when you're working and, and doing things that's going to you know, cause the company to make more money, that's going to come back to you. Look, it, it only makes sense. And the Bible says here, look, you know, if you, you, he that tilleth his land, you have plenty of bread. You'll be able to eat. You'll be just fine. But he that followeth after a vain person shall have poverty enough. You follow with the wrong crowd. You follow after people who are interested in vanity, the things of this world, the riches, all this other stuff. It says you're going to come to poverty. Look at verse number 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessing. Someone who's faithful, dependable, right? You'll abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Making haste, that means you, you are quickly, just, just trying to do it real fast, real quick, real easy. That is gambling. You're trying to make money really fast. The Bible says you shall not be innocent. So think about that the next time you drive by the casino and you want to go there. Look, if you're making haste to be rich, I want to, I want to go and, you know, you never know. One of these times I'll just, you know, I'll pull that slot machine and boom, I'm going to make 10 grand. Look, if you're making haste to be rich, you're not innocent according to the Bible. Look at verse number 22. The Bible says, he that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye. Now, why do you think that the person that's hasting and, and really wanting to get rich fast has an evil eye? Because the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. So if you're just focused on getting money really quickly, you have the love of money, and that's the root of all evil. It says, you have an evil, hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. Right? And this just proves what I was saying earlier. You know, these people who, who oftentimes will win the lotto, or they'll, they'll win it big in Vegas, and they have these, these big payouts end up filing for bankruptcy. And the Bible says right here, he that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. 
That's not the solution to your problems. You see, God's ways and just the right way in general, it's never the quick and the easy path. It's the longer path. It's the harder path. It's, it's a path that you have to take. It's going to require some work. It requires effort. But the payout is there. I mean, the Bible oftentimes likens the things to, to a seed. And, you know, the blessings that you receive later, you know, you sow the seed. It starts off real small. But even sowing that seed, it involves work. You have to till the land. You have to water. Right? You have to... You have to to dung. You have to do all these things to try to get that, you know, add the nutrition, get that to grow. And do you get to reap the results overnight? No. You've got to wait for that thing to grow and grow and grow before it's finally able to produce. But then when it does produce, it produces greatly. You'll yield a lot of fruit from that, you know, from that tree. And this is the way that God over and over again throughout the Bible explains that this is how our life is going to be. You know, the Christian life it's day after day, precept upon precept as you learn and you get sin out of your life and you just continue to do the right thing. And, it's, and look, it's not easy to do the right. It's e a lot easier to do the wrong thing. It's a lot easier to go into sin. It's a lot easier to give up. It's a lot easier to, to forsake church and to go out and just live, walk the way of the world. That's, like, that's easy. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because nobody's going to be giving you a hard time about that. Nobody's going to be persecuting you. It's a lot easier to go out and do those things. But the hard way is the right way, and you'll get blessed in the end when you're standing before God at the judgment seat of Christ, and He's given out rewards, and all of the work that you've done for God is, is tried in the fire, and it comes through like the gold, silver, and precious stones abides the fire. That's the reward you're going to get, and you will receive plenteously. Turn, if you would, to Matthew chapter 6. Because even if you disagree with, I, I don't see how, but if you disagree with all the other points I made about gambling, about going to the casinos, and, and everything else, I still would not want to gamble for this reason, for what we're going to read in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, verse 19, the Bible says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I should have had you keep a finger in Proverbs. Flip back to Proverbs chapter 30, because I want to show you this as well. Proverbs chapter 30. Because think about this. What if I win? What if I go to the casino and I win, and I win real big? I win, I mean, I win, you know, $50,000 or something. $100,000. Let's just say I do it, and, and I win. Time and time again in the Bible, you're going to see people whose hearts turn away from God because they get caught up in the riches of this world. The riches of this world choke out. And if I were to have exceeding riches, I would be worried that myself, I would turn away from God. I would get lifted up with some element of pride. I would think that, that things, you know, things have become too easy. I don't have to rely on God. I've got everything taken care of. That's why when we go out soul winning in the richest areas, almost nobody gets saved. Why? Because they don't have a need. Because they don't feel like they need God. They're like, who is God? Who cares about it? Look at all this stuff that I've made. I've done this. I've worked hard for this myself. I've amassed all this wealth and all this money, and I'm doing just fine. I don't have any needs. What do I need God for? They don't realize they need Him for their salvation because they can't see hell, even though that's where they're destined because they haven't received Christ as their Savior. But they don't, they don't see that need because they don't feel it. They don't understand. They need to rely on God. They need to rely on Christ. And I would never want to have myself in that situation to where I'm thinking that, you know, maybe I stop praying and I start backsliding and getting away from God just because I'm so comfortable in my life. You know, when you're not that comfortable, I have a tendency to go, I go to God a lot more during my, you know, when I'm in times of, of serious need, when there's problems going on, I'm in communication with God. And this is probably how everybody is. You know, it's part of our nature. But we ought to try to maintain that level of communication with God and prayer and everything else and, and staying in His Word even when we're not in, in prosperity. 
or even when we are in prosperity, even when we're not in times, of, in times of trouble. But in Proverbs 30, look at verse number 7. The Bible reads, Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. So he's saying, this is what I want. This is what I'm requiring of you. Please don't deny him before I die. He says, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. So he's saying, look, I don't want to be really poor because I don't want to feel, I don't want to be tempted with then having to go out and steal and do something and break God's commandments because I'm so hungry, because I'm so poor, just, just to try to get by. It's like, I don't, want to, I don't want to do the wrong thing in that sense. But he's saying, I also don't want to be rich. Don't give me a whole bunch of riches because I don't want to just say, to deny God and just say, well, who is the Lord? Right? As if God's not the one who provided everything for you. I don't want to deceive myself into thinking that, everything's just great. I, I'm such a good, I'm such a good slot machine puller. I'm, you know, whatever, like, or I deserve this. I had this coming. I don't want to have those types of riches. And you should, if you're wise, you wouldn't either. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And in the book of wisdom, he's saying, look, these are the only two things that I'm asking for. So I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be rich. Just, just, just keep me in, in an area where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting by. I'm doing okay, but I, I'm not just abounding in a bunch of wealth because that will, that will steer you away from serving God. Now, turn, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 5. Because my last point is it's not, it's not for Christians to be partakers with the foolishness of this world. And when I started off the sermon, I was asking, you know, is, is gambling, is going to the casino, is that, is that something that's of God? Or is that something of the world? I think you look at the fruits of the casino and, be, and realize that's not of God. The, everything that goes on, the filthy conversations, the alcohol drinking, the, the smoking, everything that goes on in those casinos, that's not of God. Let's not be a partaker of the folly of others, of the foolishness of other people. We need to be separated from this world and from the pleasures of sin. Ephesians chapter 5, look at verse number 7. The Bible reads, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And think about that. This is how we should be walking. So analyze the things that you do against being a child of light. Say, how, is the, how am I being a good Christian by doing whatever it may be? Doing this activity. Today, we're, at, we're specifically looking at going to a casino, going to gamble. But apply that to everything in your life because we need to be walking as Christians. I mean, that's how we should be doing everything in our life. So even when you go to work, the Bible says that you know, we need to work for our boss, not as, as with eye service as men pleasers, but as unto the Lord. So even at your job, you need to be thinking, hey, I'm working for God. I'm not just working for my boss, but I'm, I'm working for, for God. This is, that's how the attitude you need to have when you go and do those things. And that's how you can still walk as a child of light. And you can have that good testimony and say, hey, here's a man who's providing for his family. You know, the Bible says, he that careth not for his own is worse than an infidel if you're not able to take care of your family. So you could, you could have this testimony of a Christian, say, here's a Christian, he's going to work, he's earning money to, to support his family and to support himself and, and to, you know, this is right and acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. But look at what it says here. We're going we're gonna to read this because we need to, hopefully, every aspect of our life, we can, we can look at this this way and say, yes, this is, this is right. The things that I'm doing are right. Uh, verse number 9 for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And that's what I was just talking about. We need to prove what we're doing of whether or not it's acceptable unto the Lord. Prove it. Decide for yourself. Hey, think about this. If you're in a place like a casino, you know, would Jesus just be sitting right there next to you, you know, as you're, you know, chugging on a beer and, and, and you know, playing cards and gambling and throwing your money at him and, you know, and doing all this other stuff. Is that, is, that some, is that really the place that you think you would just, that Jesus would be like, hey, let's go out, let's go out to the casino tonight. What do you want to do tonight? Hey, I got an idea. Let's go to the casino. And if that's your vision of Jesus, you have got a warped view of God. You've got a very warped, twisted, perverted view of who God is and who Jesus Christ is. If you think that he's just like, 
Hey, it's Friday night. Let's go to the casino. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. God's will for your life is not to go down to the casino and make a quick buck. That's not what he wants you to do. Don't be a fool and think that God's just fine with that. That's not what he wants you doing. What does he want you doing? He wants you walking in, the, in his steps, walking in the, in the way that he has you, learning his word, praying, Reaching souls, converting people to Christ. That's what he wants you doing with your time. Supporting your family, raising your children properly, doing, you know, doing all of these things. You could see, and I, I preach other sermons. I preach a sermon that's you know, about God's will, what's God's will for your life. That's what God wants you doing. Those things that we find listed out in the Bible. So compare the things that you do. Is, is, this, is this in God's will? Is this what God wants me doing? No. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. What would you think if you saw the pastor of your church walking into a casino? Just go, just, it's Friday night and he's going in. And, you know, who knows what he's doing, right? You're thinking like, man, what, you know, what is he doing in there? Or walking into a, a bar, or walking into a strip club, or what, you know, like, look. You say, well, it's just a casino, it's not a strip club. It might as well be. It's true. With all the drinking and everything else that goes on, look, it, it, this stuff is wicked. We need to abstain. You could say, oh, but it, you know, here, and here's the thing. Like, if I ever have to go like, use the restroom or something, I'm never going to step foot in a casino to do it. Because I'm going to stay in from the, you'll be like, oh, but, but you, you had a legitimate purpose. You weren't going in to gamble. You weren't going in to drink. You weren't going to do anything. Look, I'm going to abstain from the appearance of evil. I'm not even going to make it look like someone could just spot me and be like, yeah, you know, I saw Pastor Burson. He was walking in that casino. No. We stay far away from it. I'm going to flee from it. So why, why is it that you like to gamble? Why would you like to? What's your motive? You say it has nothing to do with the money, then buy a video game. You say it's entertaining. Do you really think that's the place where God wants you to get your entertainment from? Don't let your sinful nature blind you from this truth. There's a lot of pe people, look, and, and it doesn't matter what the sin is. And, and I, I have no idea if anybody has a problem in this room or not. I'm just going to preach the Bible. I'm going to preach on this subject because it needs to be preached. And I have no clue. But if it is, don't, you know, and with any sin that you have, don't just make excuses and justifications. Because that is, I mean, that is your first, the, the, the flesh's response to hearing preaching like this is to make up all kinds of excuses and justifications of why this is fine. Oh, there's nothing wrong with this. Look, prove from the scriptures. Be honest with yourself and, and determine um, if this is right or not. And, you know, this, this whole sermon has been about gambling with your money. But even if you don't go gambling at the casino, I think we can apply this to our regular lives. You know, your life, your life in general should not just be one big gamble. Now, we ought to be living our lives by faith. Faith is something that's unseen, but it's not a gamble, right? Like, my, my faith on Christ, I'm not gambling with that. I know that's true. I know that to be right. There, that's, that's a solid foundation. That's not unsteady. That's not, well, I, you know, because people always ask, you know, oftentimes people ask, well, what if you're wrong? You know, what? I'm not. Like, this is, this, Jesus Christ is the foundation. It's, this is the truth. And people get confused because there's all these other religions who say they all say they're right. Yeah, but they're easily proven wrong and they're proven false. And you could, you know, if you actually look at it honestly, you can see, yes, these are these people are contradicting. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that you can just you could just you know, work hard enough to make it to heaven after you've already done all these other sins that deserve hell. You, I mean, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't balance out. 
The only thing that even makes sense is the fact that Christ paid for all of our sins, that it's a free gift. We don't earn it, and God gives it to us for free because he loves us. That makes sense. And we have a, a book, we have holy scripture that has been proven true. We've had prophecies that have come to pass, and there are no contradictions within the, within the page of this book. Zero. There's, there's lots of reasons to, to, to show why we have faith and that it's not just gambling like, well, I don't know, I, I, I got all these choices, I'm just going to put my soul over here and just hopefully, you know, like, like on the roulette wheel, right? And hopefully that's, that's, I got the right number. No. We live our life by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And when we have faith, we're trusting in God's guidance in our life. Hebrews 11 one says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And Hebrews 11 gives a great list of people in the Bible that live by faith. And, you know, it goes through Abraham and, you know, all, just all these great men of God. Like Abraham, for example, you know, he picked up, he moved, he didn't know where he was going, but he listened to God and he obeyed him. He just trusted that what God had for him was right and was good. And God's not going to lead him astray, so he just did what God had for him to do. Now, the odds may not always be in our favor when it comes to our faith, right? There may be decisions in our life that, that might seem like a long shot, but if we know we are in God's will, we just need to have the faith to follow through with what's right, knowing by faith in God that no matter what the, you know, what the outcome is, that the, as the Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Gambling has doubt. Gambling is risky. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know the outcome. But living by faith, there's no need for doubt. Amen. There's, there's no need to wonder. You just, you're, you're walking by faith and not by sight. <clears throat> turn, if you would, to Proverbs 23. The last place we're going to turn, and we're going to close the sermon with this. Proverbs 23. Because I also believe that it's a sin to spend your money foolishly, like just to completely blow it. Because if you think about it, you know, God's blessed. If you have a job and you, know, you make a certain amount of money or whatever, and God's blessed you with things. Just to take that blessing and just flush it down the toilet and just, you know, just go give it to some stupid casino. And, you know, that, that's not... That's not showing just, you know, general respect for, for what God has given you. And we definitely shouldn't be supporting that local casino with our earnings so that they can further rob people, and, you know, and, and deceive them and, and, you know, and bring more people in that, that truly have problems and that are, that are addicted to this stuff and, and that are wasting and ruining their entire lives and that are supporting this love of money theme because that is a disease and infection that, 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 ruins the whole society and that's why you have communities that like the whole reason they don't want to have casinos in their area and i didn't understand this you know when i was a kid when i was in my early 20s i didn't i didn't have any of this wisdom or knowledge Be like why do people care if there's a casino well because the love of money is the root of all evil so when you start introducing places that just magnify people's greed and their and their desire for the love of money you're going to get crime. You're going to get a lot of other things that go along with that. Amen. That's just going to be a, a cancer on your society, on your community, in your area, because the love of money is the root of all evil. So you start it, you know, incentivizing and getting people m to love money even more and just adding that attraction of the love of money. You're adding a, all kinds, you know, a whole bunch of you know, all other evil. That's what you're adding. Yep. And it's not good for the community to have it. And I wish, you know, would to God we didn't have this casino that we have in town. <clears throat> Proverbs 23, look at verse number four. The Bible says, Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. This money, these riches... Here today, gone tomorrow. They mean nothing. Less than nothing. It's vanity. We need to be setting our hearts and our affections on things above, not on things on this earth. And, um, you know, be responsible with the, with the money that God's given you. Be content with it. Don't be trying to, to multiply that real quickly and just turn that, 
you know, your paycheck and might multiply it by 10 just to make a whole bunch more money, you know, whatever in, in this, this hasty way. Because I'm telling you, it's just going to lead you to more sorrow. So let's borrow as I have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your words and your words of wisdom, dear God. I pray that um, nobody here would have that problem with, with gambling and um, going into these, these wicked casinos, dear God, but um, that you'd help us all just to learn the truth of the matter. And God, if, if anyone really, really enjoys those games, God, I pray that they would just satisfy that desire, not by gambling, but by getting some video game or something where um, they're, they're not just um, you know feeding this love of money. But even that... Lord, even, even getting something like a video game you know, can, be, can be tempting to want to go and start doing the real thing again. People have this problem. Lord, I pray people just flee these things and stay as far away from them as possible, dear Lord, and that you would just give us wise hearts and help us to be content with the things that we have and not to have a, a bitter heart or um, an envious heart, dear Lord, of, of uh, a covetous heart of things that we don't have, but you would just help us to, to understand and, and to look upon the good in our life and the, and the good blessings you've given us and to be thankful and happy for all the things that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.